This conference will now be recorded. All right, we will call the Vice School Connection Committee meeting of 9-11 to order, please. Um, roll call. Tracy Flukey. Here. Kyle Jago. Here. Jessica Atkinson. Here. Kim Shan. Here. Sharon Powell. Here. And then uh, Voight and Schmitz are um, I was just wondering if you could take a moment of silence just to remember all those who perished and had their lives changed forever on 9 11. Thank you, everybody. Item four, action on the agenda. I need a motion to approve the agenda. Um, I was wondering, since we have a, um, Ben, you have to leave, might have to head out of here, right? Yeah, I, I mean, calls are yeah. stacking, so if I could. So maybe we could move up item 8A, since it, um, he was going to talk on that, and move that up before, right after the, or part of the updates. Can we do that? Yeah, and then maybe a, just a little bit there was some conversation on Holmgren Way. Okay. Um, I was asking if Ben could just give us a brief overview of traffic control for game day. Game day on game day. Yeah, if that's okay. Sure. Okay. Okay, so we could move maybe 8A and 8B up before 7A. That's on the right. Brian, we'll push you back a little bit then. Sorry. Okay. If someone could make a motion in that regard, I'll make a motion. Okay. Second. I'll second. Second, Kyle. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. All right. How about action on the minutes from the August 14th meeting? Any additions, changes, corrections? The only thing I have to add, Kelly, is. Um, one other person that was in attendance and didn't sign in was Morgan Fuller. Oh, okay. F-U-L-L-E-R? F-U-L-L-E-R, correct. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented with the additional. Motion by Jessica. I'll second. Second by Kyle. All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, comments from the public. Um, must be limited to items not on the agenda, must state name and address, limited to five minutes, board's role is to listen and not discuss the item, personal issues cannot be discussed, nor individuals named, and board is not able to take action at this meeting. Does anybody have comments from anything that is not on the agenda? All right. Thank you. All right, we'll start seven and report some updates. Let's start, how about with public safety report, Ben, if you have anything in general, and then we'll walk the other two items. Yeah, nothing really to report on our end. Okay. Extremely busy as usual. A couple new guys starting, so hopefully that alleviates some of the pressure on, on the new guys on the ship. So, this business as usual. Okay. Thank you. Then we will skip down to item 8A which is the discussion on motorized bicycles, electric personal assistant devices, ATVs, and other vehicles, including neighborhood electric vehicles, scooters, et cetera. Ben also gave, hopefully we got a copy of this. If you did not, please grab one. Um, I want to come up here, Ben, it easier. Sure. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, I guess there was some discussion as far as the allowance of these types of vehicles on roadways? Go ahead. Oh, just going to say, like, just kind of general, so I have kids in middle school, so no. they're all over. Yeah. So it's come up because obviously, legislatively, there's confusion as to what they qualify as, and some of them, where should they be riding them on the road versus the sidewalks versus, the, and really, in general, I know there's no clear line, but what should we or what are we looking at as a village for? Like, what are we enforcing? What are we not? Is it just more like unsafe behavior? 
Should we be telling them to be more on the road right way, bike lanes, going with traffic, you know, just trying to get some kind of guidelines as to what are we looking at for them? Um, our ordinance is pretty restricted. Mm -hmm. So basically any village property is a no-go. So and unfortunately, we don't have the staff to enforce everyone. <laughs> They're everywhere. If anyone has a notice, but um, so we're talking right now about scooters <clears throat> or electric bikes right now. There's scooters more. Electric I was scooters? going more on like the electric scooters, just because okay. I know that's how. Even like at Woodside, we have a bunch of employees that take them to work now. That was like it's just crazy how all of a sudden it seems like overnight they are everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. And so I know technically, because this came up like a couple years ago when they were starting to see them, I think like a bird was coming into the area um, and it was very restrictive. And so that's where I'm like, well, technically everything kind of says it's a no go, but they're everywhere. So I'm like, so. And I'm just guessing as to why it's so restrictive is yeah. because of the bird um, scooters, yeah. because I don't know if anyone's been around oh, yeah. Green Bay, but they just kind of get dumped willy nilly whenever their money runs out or mm -hmm. they run out of batteries or they just, Drunkenly get misplaced. <laughs> so um, we've had, yeah. Uh -huh. So they're GPS monitored, but I'm sure it takes some time for that GPS to turn the system off. So we've actually had some on Home Grid Way by Stadium View um, on Ashland Avenue. And there's a 1 800 number that you have to call to have them removed. So they just sit there until uh -huh. Bird comes uh -huh. and swipes them up and brings them back to where they need to be. So I mean, I'm guessing that's why it's so restrictive, is to kind of keep those out of the village, which is mm -hmm. personally a good idea for me because we hear all the calls from Green Bay Fire and PD about people crashing because yep. how much fun is it to drive those <laughs> legally drunk? So, so then those bird type scooters, mm -hmm. whether it's bird itself or just Any a personal ones. one, right? That because now people are buying these, mm -hmm. yeah. Currently <laughs> again, is it currently against village code and or traffic state traffic law to ride or use those on sidewalks? So the state statute kind of pushes it back on to the municipality to make their own restrictions, and our restrictions are no. They're not allowed on streets, sidewalks, any village maintained property, which technically would exclude all of the um, the county roadways, so Oneida and Packerland, Lombardi, Hanson, you know, all the the ones designated with letters typically. So, and I believe the, it's no more than 35 miles an hour is the only one, or no less than 35 miles an hour is what they have to be able to drive on, so. so. So to confirm, if the street is listed at less than 35 miles per hour, they can they, be used? They can on a county highway. Only on a county highway. Only on a county highway because that's not maintained by the village. Sure. Or build from in theory, they can be nowhere, so the most dangerous correct and the village could and theoretically the village. or practically be on the high street, yeah, because it's speed limit is 30 miles an hour. Sure, like, how, does county have any regulations against it on their roads? I know they do with like <clears throat> TVs, they do not allow those would be highways, the county roads, those would be highways typically more than 35 miles an hour, yeah. so they wouldn't be allowed. So, that would be something as a municipality we would have to decide if we want to. Or are we just going to continue <clears throat> to? I, I that's not that's not my decision. Okay. Per, personally, I mean, okay. I like the restrictiveness because yeah. it allows us to take action if if, if we want, need to. If you feel necessary. Otherwise, I mean, if they're riding right. down the road and we have nothing to say. That's right. So are we restricting them because just having those things dumped off is just a nuisance, or is a safety issue the big concern? I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, it, it becomes a, a hazard because they, people do leave them wherever they stop. So in sidewalks, which creates issues for people walking and biking, um, in roadways, like, and they're, they're everywhere. So, I mean, they were in a ditch over on Ashland the other day. So like the personal owned ones, though, it's probably more they wouldn't, they wouldn't be. Yeah, owned. I'm guessing they would. <laughs> they're I kind can, of expensive. I can tell you I mean, who I not be, we wouldn't have an issue with my kids having scooters if they just left it there. Also yeah. Mark, what they so. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to but, say that we have enough people to enforce yeah. everything on here, but like I said, we have like four calls stacked and the ambulance just right. left again, so we're busy. 
it's more of a complaint driven issue right now. So let me ask you this for, it says on here, motor bicycle. So does that include electric bicycles or does the verbiage have to be, <clears throat> what is in here as the state? So I believe a, a, motor, a motor bicycle is considered a bicycle with pedals with a motor no more than 750 watts is what it, it lists as motor bicycle. So an electric bicycle would fall into that or not? Yeah, they would have pedals. <clears throat> so it sounds like right now our ordinances are very restrictive. You cannot use them on trails, you can't use them on sidewalks, you can't use them on roads. Any of these types of vehicles that are listed in A and B in the ordinance right now. Any village property. So theoretically, they would apply. Yes, I believe the municipal code says they would, if they're under 14, they get a written warning. Um, first offense is warning, warning for second offense, and the parents are notified. And the third offense is a citation. So we know, Jessica has said, these are out there, been seeing them as well. They're out there doing their thing. So, and your question was, where are they supposed to ride? Where are they not supposed to ride? We're saying it's illegal for them to ride anywhere, basically mm -hmm. in the village except on private property, but they're gonna be out there. So do we want to change ordinances or look into it, have some controls? So I guess it's better to have controls and have them in a safe place instead of having them not understanding where they're supposed to go and abiding by the law to make it safer for them. I mean, if you if you word it as the same as a bicycle, which is allowed to be on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. as a personally owned vehicle mm -hmm. or scooter, yeah, personal, that would sure. keep the, the birds out of here. Yeah. In theory. Mm -hmm. But also, at least now we know. There are warnings and stuff that you can say. For, yeah, well, yeah. Like, like I said, yeah. It's usually more of an educational thing when we mm -hmm. run into it. So. Yeah. yeah. I would suggest maybe if we ask Patrick, our legal attorney, to look into this a little bit and see what other communities are doing with it, because we're not the only one experiencing this. Everyone is, and Everyone see is. Mm -hmm. how they're handling it, what the ordinances say, mm -hmm. and see what we could come up with. Maybe we need to tweak these a little bit. Work with public safety, work with them, see, you know, what would work, what would work best to get the word out and make it safer. Because my poor mobility is not going away. No, it's not. I mean, there's more and more things that people are going to be writing, and unless we embrace it and have some rules and regulations, it's just going to be out of control, which it kind of is yeah. getting there now. I would say. Challenge with some of the trails, Tracy, yeah. is, is that they're, speed. It, the, well, speed, yeah. but I mean, if they receive DNR funding, the DNR does not allow, mm -hmm. you know, the well, state does yeah. not allow motorized, any, any kind of motorized vehicle unless it's an ADA issue right. where they, they need it for an ADA transportation. Right. Thing. So electric bikes being used as an electric bike or an electric or gas powered scooter or whatever, technically, would not be not because of our regulations, but because of the state. Yeah, state. So, so there's there's yeah. that as well. I don't I don't disagree because right, they're yeah. everywhere. So right. it's kind of like it, we either like ignore it. Ignore it. <laughs> I was gonna say either we're gonna take stance and, 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 or ignore it. It's still complaint driven, or or we actually allow it in some form or fashion. Right. Um, you know, and try and have guidelines for for usage. Well, and I know the facts are trail is dealing with that right now because yeah. there's tons of if you've been out there's tons of electric bikes there's yeah, tons but, of but technically all kinds of because things. of their funding they're right. not that's so all legal been, usage right but they i know matt's been reaching out to the nr to say okay these are here what are we going to do and how are we going to handle these so i think that's going to be an issue also on how they're going to handle it because again they're not going to go away and they're going to be out there yep. and how do we address it either be proactive mm -hmm. or let it be wild 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 well, thing the pier in Green Bay, especially with the colleges, because like if you go over to St. Norbert's, like some friends of ours, we've helped their son move in, 
Yeah, they're like, and again, I think about them like that's perfect for a college kid is if an owner gets to their job because they can't have their car, right? But now they can get around. But I was like, all I was thinking was, it's a good thing I didn't have that in college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm like, but they are, they're everywhere. So I think, yeah. like I said, I didn't want to, I don't want to be hypocritical of being like, yeah, I know that's wrong, but I just let my kids run them all over either. So right. that's actually in here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it's my opinion that. Because a Schwaben is part of a larger community, right. we need to be consistent. I think everybody needs to be consistent because you can't say, well, you could ride in a Schwaben, but you could go across the street into Green Bay, and then right. you can't, you know, right. or we, that's sort of the bird problem. Yeah. They're okay in Green Bay, but they're not in a Schwaben. You know, I think that's kind yeah. of. Consistency is good. You, yeah, yeah, that consistency. We need that consistency so yeah. people know what to expect. And yeah. if there's. No rules, which kind of the way it is now, people make their own rules. Right. So if there's the community-wide you know, standards that are accepted or consistent everywhere, I think that is something that has to be part of it. Yeah, easier to educate people when it's consistent throughout than the yeah. changes of every community line. You know, so. and maybe it's something we need to just table for another. You know, like. Year or something, I just thought it was worth bringing up oh, while other things, yeah. as they're starting to show up everywhere. Like yeah. I said, we're gonna have people taking and, them to work. I'm like, yeah, it's and maybe seeing that Patrick can work on it. Maybe he's if he's a little, if it's a slow time where he has time to look into it for us, and maybe even check into the DNR thing for us. You yeah. know, he could reach out and see where they're But, but it, it's it's starting to be an issue, but I don't. You know, I see it <laughs> once in a while. I don't know that it's a major issue, but it's okay. I think it's better to talk about it. And, Think about it before it becomes a major right. issue, and yep. somebody dies because they're trying to ride us across the 172 bridge or right. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Gosh. I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> For the most sense. part, everyone's obeying the laws when they're riding their bikes, their electric bikes, and doing things. But we yeah. haven't had any issues, like, issues mm -hmm. that I've seen personally. And for me, it's more like I see a lot of times the kids all together, and that's where I'm like, you get like a pack of them, and then they're like taking up the whole, and I'm just like. Go in single file. I don't know what the rule is, but you're that. That's yeah. safer. Or, you know, yeah, but on the sidewalk, they have to yield to the pedestrians yeah. and alert them. Yeah. Well, they have their helmet. Yeah. They get their little finger. Yeah. And that may be something that the committee wants to take into consideration. I think electric bicycles are probably different than the electric than the scooters. Um, maybe ultimately, what we're looking at is that all those motorized electric device vehicles, whether it's a bicycle or scooter, they have to be on the road. They have to follow the same rules of the road that a normal bicyclist would have to use. Mm -hmm. They should not be used on the sidewalk because that's designated for pedestrians. It probably would be doing some of those conflicts. Yeah. Um, just looking through, looks like rules of the road, chapter 346 does delve into electric bicycles a little bit. I think we can look at our code, see how it matches, because those updates were relatively recent, I believe, yeah. 2021, 2022, and our quote is predates yes. that. So yeah. we can all have Patrick take a look at that and see, and then maybe look at, maybe there's some avenues to, to approach with that. But electric bicycles should operate the same as a bicycle. As a bicycle. Yeah. Yeah. Am I wrong, or, or is that trouble? I thought we were almost an outlier when we allowed bicycles on the sidewalk. We, we are. We, we do. That. We, yeah. do. Say we, we do. do. Right. Yeah. We do. Yeah. yeah. But maybe maybe the conscious conscious effort by this group and by the village to say bicycles are okay because you can manage speed probably a little bit better, but electric motorized bicycles should be on the road. But the thing is, you know, a lot of the electric motorized bikes bicycle riders are less experienced cyclists mm -hmm. because they're just getting they back into it and, and they don't yeah and a lot of them ride on the sidewalk because they're they don't feel comfortable on the road so you get that. You know, we think they should be on the road, and they're like, yeah, I'm not going on the road. So you get that, and then you have some of them that ride bikes that don't have motors, and they're very comfortable on the road, and they would never go on a sidewalk. So you get all kinds of different bikes, because I think they need to be treated the same whether they have electric vehicle, electric um, assist or not, because they are the same bike. They are the same thing. They all have to abide by the rules of the road of any bicycle, whether they have an assist or not. And I think the state does say that in some of their stuff. They all, they're treated the same as regular bicycles. Yeah, electric bicycles. Yeah. Treated the same. Yes, that's a very good way. I guess I'd rather see them on the sidewalk. We have far less bicycle it's versus it. pedestrians than car versus car. Believe it or not, bicyclists are safer on the road than they are on the sidewalk. 
especially when they're going counter foam on the sideline because the motor vehicle drivers will not see them because that's not a point where they have cars where they have to work. So it seems counterintuitive, it but it really is true. Yeah. Okay, I, you know, I typically don't ride on the Fox River Trail because I've had exactly. too many people yep. pull out in front of me. With... Yep. So if I'm on the, on the road, they give me, they, they're looking for me, they see me, they stop, yep. but if you're pulling out of a driveway. Yep. Or going across the lot, then uh, yep. they don't see you. So, yeah. Okay, so if we could do that, maybe just ask Patrick mm -hmm. to work on it and then bring it back when he has a chance. And uh, maybe I think. Um, Rex's point is really good if you look into the DNR end of it because we do have a lot of trails that were funded by DNR and see where they're at on it because I know Matt from uh, Brown County is going to be looking into that as well because um, you're right the backyard does say now that if you're DNR funded you can't have an electric or a motorized vehicle on the trail so, except if it's a assist like a hand catch assist. Yeah, does that sound good? Do we need a motion on that, Joe, at all, or do you think we'll just go for it? Okay. Any other questions or anything on that, anybody? Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else we got before you leave on us here. Um, <laughs> 8B. Oh, coming right in, yes. 8B. We can jump to that, everybody. Home can wait. Maybe, um, again, Ben, maybe if you can just let us know, and you can sit. Do we have to sure. stand? Sit up here or wherever you want to sit. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, sit at the table and we can see sit you. You have to yell across. <laughs> right. um, maybe just explain to us. I mean, this came up a little bit at our last meeting when Brian was here. Explain how they handle Hendon Way and Packer Day. So if you could maybe go through that with us again. Yeah, so. Holmgren gets shut down, hard closed, uh, northbound starting at. Or mirror. Um, I think it's shortly before the second half. So we put up barriers and then after the game ends, all traffic flows south. And it's a hard close at armed forces like in all directions. So allow pedestrians across to the bars to continue the fun. Okay, so home run after the game. <clears throat> all right. At the second half, then you guys shut off all northbound traffic on Homegrin from Cormier North. Mm -hmm. So then after the game, you can only go southbound from Lombardi all the way down to Cormier? From Armed Forces. Armed Forces, okay. Yeah. Um, and then there's a Uber, Lyft, and taxi turnaround okay. right by the bars. Okay, so then they go back to Lombardi. So they can just head south. Okay. And pick up. okay. So Armed Forces took Cormier. So after game, then that is shut off. I mean, it's also Ridge Road, too. They do the same thing. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Ridge Road is the same way. Same Ridge Road process. is a little different. All traffic coming out of Valley View is pushed north. Um, yeah, actually, you have traffic coming from Morris north all the way up three lanes deep. And then all our are <laughs> to depend on to Lombardi westbound. So that's worked out the best for us. We initially weren't closing Holmgren way down and allowing both lanes of traffic to go. And then we had three officers at Holmgren Armed Forces. We had a lot of near misses and pedestrian vehicles um, and people jumping on double decker buses and falling off. <laughs> so the hard close just seemed to make more sense. Is it nice for yeah, the yeah, the back, yeah. <laughs> you gotta make it though. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, you're still up. Yeah. And how long does it take you to clear that before you open it up to the two-way traffic? Honestly, it doesn't take that long. No, maybe like an hour. Yeah. It, it, it's pretty quick. It, I mean, it used to take much longer with the two-way traffic, but now that we... We can just get everybody out in a quicker fashion yeah. so then it's yeah. done faster verse. Yeah. All that congestion. Of the science. Yeah. Pre pre game you guys are closing all traffic north and southbound on home grid between Mike McCarthy and Lombardi, like an hour to two hours before game. It's an hour before the game at okay. home ground forces gets closed. Okay. It goes from Mike McCarthy to Armed Forces again? Mike McCarthy's open. Okay. So, so it's just, just north. any north of Mike McCarthy. 
So I think the intersection is open, but you can't go north. Oh, yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. yeah, there's very few there. No north. That's, that's where the that's where Uber starts. thing starts on the left side. Okay, and that's an hour before the game, approximately, that you shut that down. Yeah. And that's been working pretty good, too. Awesome. And people are getting to where they need to get, and there really hasn't been an issue. Yeah, the only people that don't get to where they need to get are the ones that really haven't looked ahead. And maybe it's their first time here. Oh, okay. Okay. Trying to find parking at the last minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Okay, so Holmgren, pre-game, one hour before, close North of McCarthy to Iron Forces, post-game, southbound only, and that's shut at the second half, at the start of the yeah, second right half. Set, yeah, it's right shortly after the second half. And that's from Iron Forces to Cormier, yep. and it takes about an hour for yeah, the traffic to yeah. head out or get out there. Okay. Any other questions law enforcement wise or anything you want to add, Brian, as far as the Packer games that you think may work better, if this working good or bad? It sounds like it's working good. No, it works it works good. Okay. Yeah. You know, the two wins cell phone are definitely helping. So. Any other questions? Then about law enforcement and or home run at all. Is parking restrictive on game days? On um, uh, Mike McCarthy next to the practice field, all that's uh, day of Lambo event, no yeah. parking. There are certain areas that's usually posted. Yeah, you know, the permanent signs and then uh, DPW puts out temporary signs and certain spots. That's you know, basically for fire EMS equipment to get down the road, otherwise it would be impossible to make certain turns. <laughs> that's, I think that's why we requested permanent signs on elements. Yeah, yeah. Was the fire apparatus not being able to get down there if they were parked. How about, um, I benefit for pregame, I just shut it down. And the pedestrians could just walk all through there. So post game, when you have it just southbound, are the pedestrians still not just on the sidewalk? And there are a lot moving through there still. Uh, armed forces is shoulder to shoulder, especially if it's a close game and everyone lets out at the same time. Yeah, it's just a mad, mass of people. So then they get the home grin, and then they either walk down the sidewalk on the eastern or south side, yep. the east or west side of Holmgren, and that seems to do it, and then all the traffic going out south, and you don't have as lot of conflicts. Yeah, we don't see a whole lot of issues um, south of, I'd say, Borman. They're still making a lot of crossings from our okay. forces to Mike McCarthy, okay. but there's no north of traffic, so it's just all coming up. So the pets seem to be able to move through there safer with that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. the pedicabs get in and out, no problem. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else on law enforcement? And you guys still everyone understand exactly how they handle it now, how public safety does it. Sounds like it works works well. Yeah. And, and if you care, care to see, we do ride along. So. Yeah, I've done ride along. Fun, you know. I've done a walk along too with the chief. That was fun too. <laughs> it was a good day too. It was warm, so I'll pass you over there. Yeah, get it in now. Yeah, get it in now. Yeah, before it gets really crappy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Joel, anything else on home brand? I mean, there's a bunch of different um, documents attached. Um, talking about um, ARPA has a really good document on road diets um, that I received from the public works director in Appleton. Um, debunking road diet, I think was FHWA, is that right? Sure. Um, and then RR fees, um, Green Bay, as we talked about, Forest Green, 60 some RR fees in Green Bay. And that's a document they put together to educate people on how to use an RR fee. We have some in our community, we have one on um, Bridge, and we have one on Oneida oh, Streets. Oh, and we have um, one or two on the front line from here, yeah. and then Sand Acres, we have one too. So we have them in our communities also. Again, like Kyle talked about, getting the word out and making it consist consistent throughout the area. So trying to get that out and maybe Haley can get that out on social media for us. Um, just to let people know how to use RRFB 
as a motorist and or a pedestrian on your bus. I think uh, I live on Corner Road, so I see them pretty often. And I think people, the pedestrians, are finally figuring out how to use those. And I think that was a big thing. Yeah. They would stand there and wait, you know, and when the traffic cleared, then they would go. And yeah. They would push. yeah, push the button. That's the new campaign. Ben, I know you're working today, so you likely didn't work over the weekend, but Saturday we had some pretty busy activity in, in town. With, there was a big country music concert at the Rush and the 1980s hair band. That was Friday. That was Friday. Well, that was Friday night. Mm -hmm. So you were. Two nights. I guess Friday night. Was Friday night. How, what was traffic like on those days? You know, the concert myself. What does Home Red do? And <clears throat> Um, it's pretty chaotic. There's really nowhere to park yet. I think that's in the works, as I heard correctly. Um, so people are just in the tertiary areas around here on roadways, which are packed all the wall vehicles. Um, it wasn't, it's not terrible, honestly, and because it only holds a couple thousand, so it wasn't bad. It's just drunk people somewhere everywhere. Heard there was a few broken noses. Yeah, I watched the country concert. And I say which one? The they, they may have fallen on their face. And that's yeah. Probably why. Right. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple recipes. So I think with with regards to Hogan Way, I know that the request was okay. What what should be the next steps? And, Aspen and public safety to kind of review traffic control activities for Packer Gate Day because that, that's going to be in all likelihood one of the biggest concerns and particularly with the poor, maybe with public safety, with business communities. Is what what would that look like if we eliminated a through travel lane on that stretch of roadway? Um, so we'll have, to have a good understanding of what those activities look like. Um, beyond that, just speaking with members of our some of the concerns that they have is the study that the county had done was doing point in time data collection. So it's based on a random day throughout the course of the year that is then analyzed for ABT purposes that for the idea of understanding the collector roadway as part of the, the metropolitan planning organization. So it's a requirement that they do to maintain federal funding status. But it doesn't necessarily always take into account those peak travel issues with a Packer game day or a large scale event. So our recommendation from a staff standpoint is we can hire an engineering firm to come out and basically do those point in time studies where you can get traffic counts on those busier days. We can be a little bit more deliberate about it. So if our average annual daily traffic count is about 6,000 cars, what does it look like on a Friday night when we have two events, right? Does that mean it's 10,000 cars? Does that mean it's 12,000? If you have that data, then you can you know, offer suggestions beyond that. And maybe there's traffic control, or, or maybe the counts just don't really add up to that much to have a negative effect either. You don't know what you don't know, so it's difficult to articulate one point of view if you don't have the data to. Um, we've talked about the last few months the city of Appleton's reconfiguration of College Avenue. Um, I believe that went into effect maybe August 1st-ish, so it's only been maybe a month or two since they reconfigured and we striped that. Um, so just kind of bearing some time to see how that reconfiguration works and if it is being successful. Having some conversations maybe with folks down there. I know Tracy and, and I will reach out to um, some of their planning and DPW folks to see how it's going. Um, I do plan on going down there this weekend and taking a look at it myself. I'll be in the Alton area, so I figure I'd check it out. But my understanding too is they don't have the second left turn lane at any given left. They have, or excuse me, the shared yeah. left turn lane. Um, so that's a little different. I think Holmgren's going to be different than what they did in Cal College just because you have <laughs> driveways here. And College Avenue for that segment that they reconfigured has restricted access, meaning it's restricted to intersections. Whereas here we have a number of driveways. So there's some things to just kind of take into account there. But you would design that with the, the total way then. Um, we've had some commentary from the business community about the corridor and the talking points or discussion related to reconfiguration. 
So it would make sense. And this is kind of following the same playbook that Appleton had used and having business meetings so that we got ahead of it before any formal recommendation came out, meet with the business community, kind of talk through it, inform them of, of maybe potential options, the pros and cons, and then solicit feedback. Uh, I think that adds a level of transparency and engagement with the public uh, versus that kind of old adage that government's going to just do whatever government wants to do. Well, before we made any decision, we talked to you first and we helped formulate that, that recommend, recommendation. Uh, and then from there, I think we'll, we should have a pretty adequate set of information, data, and engagement from the public. And then at that point, this committee can kind of start formulating its thoughts and recommendations. Um, what I would suggest, just again, based on the feedback that I've heard from our village board, is look at all options, not just a single recommendation, but look at all options and then develop some pros and cons to each so that when you do make a recommendation and propose that to the board, it is a very well thought out. Some of you said, well, why didn't you look at this? Well, we did, and here are the pros and cons to it so that you can articulate your position uh, better from that standpoint. And then from there, um, have staff review it. I think staff, obviously, we have engineers and, and public safety professionals and, and the whole uh, gamut. We can look at those recommendations and kind of play point counterpoint to it so that it's prepared that way as well. Because, you know, as we go to the board and to the public, I think we want to have a very uh, a strong consensus amongst everyone um, within our organization that says, yes, that we understand there are pros and cons to each, but here, here's why we recommended this, and because the pros outweigh the cons. And then everyone can articulate that. So at this point, I guess my recommendation is kind of heard from public safety on, on game day activities. You know, we could reach out to Appleton and, and get a better understanding of the success or failure of their reconfiguration, but we can also maybe look to engage with an engineering company to grab some point in time data so that we feel more confident in what, what we're really dealing with on those heavier. So that, that was, those were my thoughts as far as the process goes. Um, but certainly this is, this, is your, this is your endeavor. So if you want to move something forward or take something out or make a firm recommendation right now, you're welcome to do that. But I think if you're looking for a successful recommendation, these are the steps that I would take. So you got it on the chat. Uh, yeah, pretty soon. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to throw a little uh, something else in here. But. Um, you know, everyone says it's, you know, we're looking at only nine days out of the year, but that's not necessarily true because you have all this traffic at the hotels and everything else coming in for the entire weekend most of the time because it's a two-night minimum. So you add a rush event, a rush event, uh, another concert here, and then the Epic Center, which holds like three or 4,000. And that's happened. We've had multiple nights in a row where we've had, you know, concert after concert over at the Epic. We've had rush events both Friday, Saturday night. You have a Packer game on Sunday. You have all these people here. And it's just difficult for public safety to visualize a road diet on home grid. Um, not saying that it couldn't be beneficial. It's just having all that traffic. It's not just the game day. It's the pregame, you know, everything else that goes along with it. So that's our position right now. We're happy to look at whatever because if we can make it better, I mean, we're always looking to improve that. So, I mean, you, all the all the studies that are done, and you know, it's throughout the nation. Mm -hmm. When it's a road diet, one lane each way, as long as it's not over twenty thousand vehicles, it works, and it slows traffic down. It makes it safer for everybody. You lose, you know, rear end, right turn vehicle crashes, left turn vehicle crashes. So there is a lot of documentation. It's a lot safer, and that's a lot easier for public safety because you don't have the speed. On there, so it does have you know, it's been shown in many, many, many communities that it is a plus. But like, like Joel said, I mean, it's something that we have to talk about as a community and see if that's something that we want and that's going to work for us. And I think having the traffic counts is good. Um, the one thing about traffic counts, I don't, you know, during Packer game days, it sounds like you guys kind of have it down. So, do we need traffic counts? Then? I don't know, it's working. I get traffic well, we I don't know that we need them on Packer game day, but we need to kind of get other than those nine days. Right, we, need, we, we need to know those fresh epic right. thing events. Yes. We, you know, I guess I hadn't really considered that thought much about that, but I, yeah, I can see that. That's yeah. 
you know, and the people coming to the Packer game, they're kind of used to that. Right. People are coming through the Rush Center and the Epic Center. They're not used to that. No. So that, you know, that's. Yeah. And that they're staying in the area. The more, the easier it is to move between these places by foot instead of by car, makes it safer for everybody. I mean, it's, you know what I mean? And so that's the other thing, you know, you have a lot more people living out here, a lot more hotels in this area that people maybe would move that way instead of taking the car out to go to flex. Yeah, and if you have fewer cars, yes. you get less congestion, so. Yeah. And there's a ticket, you know, let's so be less safe. So if you could, if you could get people to leave their car home or leave it at the hotel, yeah. that makes it easier for everybody else. Yeah. But, you know, that takes a leap of faith because somebody's right. going to say, I'm not walking, I'm taking my car and I don't right. care what. Yeah. yeah. And we're a different animal because people come here just to tell you. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily have tickets to the game. They're just yeah. in the area just to have a good time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's additionally on top of the 76,000 vehicles that typically fill Ashwaubenon because there's no more parking spots in the actual stadium anymore. Um, you know, they're just coming to hang out. So yeah. that's added traffic. Yeah. So whether they're coming to hang out on game day or the day before or, you know, the whole weekend, it's... Yeah. And the Madison game was even worse because, I mean, it was, it was like two or three times a Packer game with the amount of people in traffic. And that was... Four days in a row is when that college football day started. So I think that's the idea behind the traffic counts too. Is you could maybe to to be clear too is that it's not necessarily a single day count that you're trying to gather, but maybe over a series of weeks where yeah. you can pinpoint and target certain events. Okay, you know, okay, we got a Packer home game on this Sunday, and in two weeks there's a major event at the Rash with a follow-up event at the Expo and and you know to build up, or maybe you have two home Packer games, so what does that do? And, and just kind of analyzing a period of time, but you can be very specific then and grab the data for the dates that are important to you. So if you want to see what does uh, a back-to-back -back rush center at your credit union event look like from a traffic standpoint, you can target that and say, okay, this now we know what that, that traffic hall looks like. It's even different for the Milwaukee takeovers because yeah. they typically don't stay. Yeah. So they all drive down and then they all leave. Oh, yeah. All leave. So, so yeah, you could be very specific with that too and say, okay, a full package game, we're going to target that one, we're going to analyze on that. And we know, and everybody can feel it when there's a whole Packer game or a start of training camp or whatever. Those three or four days leading up to the to the event, it gets busy here. So and you got to gear up for the draft. <laughs> He <laughs> <laughs> put it for vacation for that weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Denied. Yeah. 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 Yeah
we want people to stay and look and enjoy themselves and have it safe for yeah. all people to move through that area. I mean, that's really the bottom yeah. line. And you got a lot more density, a lot more residential up there now. And unless we start making it more easy to move, it's going to get worse. You're right. It'll yeah. get worse because people will jump in their car to go two blocks. Or they won't that. stay. They won't stay for the businesses here either. Right. They'll, they'll, they'll come back and they'll, they'll yeah. leave. Yeah. Because I'm not getting my car anyway. I'm also going to. Yeah. Else. If we can, if we can make it so this is an attractive and easy place to get in and out of, right. they'll stay at the, at the businesses, the bars, the restaurants, yeah. whatever retail. Yeah. So I think it could be good for everybody, but yeah. Just change and just Figure out a way okay. to get us two lanes each side with a center turn and bike lanes. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Joel couldn't attest to that. He almost got waked out walking across home, right? With the two lanes, they get that other vehicle that goes around the stop vehicle for you, the, you know. So that's why it's more, less safe. Okay, so Joel talked about, you know, step going forward, maybe having a stakeholders group of representatives and, you know, business people in it. Um, Maybe could we have a representative from this committee involved on that? Yeah, I think it would. Well, I think it would be important if we 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 hold it like a public engagement meeting. Yeah. I think it would be important for this committee to be present at that. Okay. Um, yeah, and coordinate that that event. Basically, kind of walk through some options that may be considered for corridor improvements, and it may extend beyond just either adding or eliminating traffic lights. It could be other corridor enhancements that. They'll bring to our attention street lighting, things of that nature, and improved hardscapes, landscapes, things of that nature that could assist with that. Could deal just strictly with crossing points and speed tables and whatever, you know, all the options could be on the table to, to really enhance this. Yeah, well, and Cole looked a lot, at, a lot of that already with his report, so I think it'd be important either to bring him back in or use the information he has. I don't think we have to start all over again because he did a lot of research. He did. A ton of work on that, so I think using what he has too would be a good thing um, instead of redoing everything again and maybe invite him to be part of that group and help with you know presenting and talking about it and, and all of that. I think would be important as well. Um, the other thing with ARPA, I just want to mention when Appleton went through their um, smart street design. Um, ARPA got involved. There's a representative from the area that came to a lot of their meetings, a public meetings, to show their support for that because as a senior, it's important to have a lesser crossing for them and for children. It's much safer. So they were very supportive of it. And they also gave Appleton a grant to help with some of the marketing end of it and get the word out and use documents and everything else. So it might be something just to consider. I have the gentleman's name and contact information. So maybe we could reach out to him and see if you would be willing to help out with us as well on it to provide some insight and maybe even some funding to help move it forward, whether it's, you know, documents for the stakeholders meeting or whatever the case may be, maybe there would be some funding that we could get for that to help with, with some of that. Um, the other thing that Appleton did is they reached out to um, the woman that was in charge of their bid district, business improvement district that they had in College Avenue, and she was their instrumental helping getting the word out. Now, I don't know if the National Women's Business Association would be a good choice or could serve in that role because we don't have a bid district for this area. We don't have any in National Women's Um So maybe reach out to the business association and see if a rep from that, from that organization would want to be involved in it as well to kind of represent. Maybe it would end up being a business owner down in this corridor, but at least reaching out to them might be a good thing to get them involved and just, you know, see what their concerns are and what, what's good, what's bad, you know, all that stuff. I, I really think that's important, but I also think we have to be careful that we don't have 20 business owners show up and just overwhelm the meeting. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, I think we need to reach out to the residents too. There's all these new apartments on here. Let's reach out to the um, business ma or the building managers and say, do you want to get involved in this? Because it affects their tenants also. And we want to make sure their voice is heard as well, I think, because that's a, youth, a very big group that's on this corridor as well. And that's a good comment. Kind of businesses make me think of the residents along the corridor too. We have rockers and we have a lot of different stakeholders along this corridor.
on a visa. Anything else on Holmgren? Anybody that you want to look into more or move forward on or comments that you have that we should look into? I think if it's agreeable to the committee, what I'll I'll work with Brian and we'll maybe put together some proposals to get some traffic code data and get some pricing as to what that looks like to the schedule. And then uh, we'll look at our schedules is how we want to handle the stakeholder meetings. So I don't want to make excuses for myself or the team, but this is a pretty busy time with budget. So if we do it, it will likely be later fall maybe early winter at the earliest. I'm not going to commit myself to anything in the next two weeks. Yeah. So. Um, well, that might be a good time to do it, actually, maybe when it slows down a little in the fall or something. I don't know. Yeah, I think the packer season, they're pretty busy, too. Especially yeah, that's true, too. Season, yeah. So they probably prefer it to be done the early part of the year. Yeah, maybe now when the packer season mm -hmm. will find out. Maybe. Okay, any other questions or any other comments, anybody on that? So we'll handle it that way. Joel will work on getting something from traffic accounts for specific events. Um, try to get a stakeholders meeting together, inviting lots of stakeholders. Um, and you're doing that in the early winter, late winter, early winter, I guess. Um, and I think that was it, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so we will jump back then to reports and updates. Um, let's go to Paul first. Let's look at you first. All right. So, um, monthly update. Um, I know Tracy had uh, given me a call at 2 o'clock. I was in a yeah. meeting at Brown County. Um, but uh, first item that we have on here is Broadway Enhanced and Pedestrian Ramp. Um, I have in here that the ramp is being addressed as part of the Alden Station Trail. Um, that paving for the trail, the uh, award bid opening will be on Thursday uh, with the award hopefully occurring in September uh, at the September board meeting, uh, which is later this month. Um, along with that, Tracy had um, some input about the desire to make it a little bit more uh, bicycle friendly to allow the bikes to get to the more northern ramp. Um, and with that, we uh, spoke with both um, McMahon mm -hmm. and the county to figure out what we would have for options to do that. Um, with that, I, I don't actually have a, I mean, I have a plan on my computer, but I, I can pull it up. Um, but what we're looking to do is uh, add essentially make the sidewalk double width between the two ramps. Uh, to allow the bikes to get to that northern ramp, um, uh, if that makes sense. Um, with that parking lot and sidewalk project, uh, the north uh, parking lot here, which is a public safety parking lot, um, they're currently working on getting the street lighting or the lighting and the gates installed for that. Um, Brookwood and uh, Lombardi Access Road uh, looking to install a sidewalk. On the north side of Brookwood, and then we're exploring options of putting a sidewalk on both the either the north or the south side of the Lombardi Access Road. Uh, currently working through um, just some utility relocates, figuring out what's going to work best. Um, Ayers did have their survey crew on site the week of August 28th, um, and currently they're in the process of drafting different concepts uh, for consideration. Uh, Alden Station Trail, I somewhat touched on that. Uh, construction will be planned uh, hopefully to start in October. Um, the schedule is currently tentative um, on the bridge project, but the bridge project is pretty much where it needs to be at this point in time. Um, we're going to be working through a punch list later this week. Um, and with that, uh, the village engineer, myself, and then also um, the parks director and the village uh, manager, we did look at the bicycle and pedestrian capital improvement plan kind of wish list, which is something that we'll be talking about a little bit further in this meeting um, to kind of prioritize where our priorities will be um, in delivering some of those projects. So with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Kim, I know you had some questions. Rex did respond to your email, so it's it's probably sitting sitting in your inbox. So Kim, what were your questions again? So everybody comes to the email and asks you if I can 
fantastic. So first of all, if you haven't seen it, the bridge is beautiful. It's very, it's very well done. It's very nice. It, it, I think it adds a lot. It's pretty and it goes to the little, old. Yeah. Is it open now? Mm -hmm. No. No. Not we're we're not going to open it up until it, until mm -hmm. Michael's gives it up basically okay. because there's there's still things that need to be done and if there's people allowed on it. If there's damage to it from that, then we're responsible versus Michael sort of way. It's not blocked off, though. You can cross it. <laughs> we're all the people, people are crossing it. Yeah. <laughs> Rex didn't know that, but thanks for bringing it up. Yeah. <laughs> we, we're it enjoying it. <laughs> it's like that should be blocked off because it's not there yet. We're enjoying it. Good. Well, I'm glad. That's awesome. <laughs> So okay. whose responsibility is it to block it off, the contractor or we the were, The last time that we were in meeting with Michaels, we said we wanted to leave the boards on. You were there. Before. Yeah. Then we said so we wanted to leave punch this block through. Because we went underneath them. Yeah, so the boards, I was out there on Friday and they're already down. I don't know where they went. But Maybe yeah. these two took them down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> the together, it's Peter's cross. There was not a problem either. Right, yeah, you just kind of knock under them, right? Yeah, you go under over them. Yes. So. But it did. So it's beautiful. It's very nice. The gravel went down, although there's some question as to whether the gravel should have gone down, but everyone in the neighborhood loved that because it looks nicer and is less tricky. Yep. I think the one issue, and you had said this is a punch list item, the lights. There's a number of lights that are, number one, I, right, I, I didn't know that they were on 24, sorry. They're on 24 hours. They, they should not be. Um, and then in terms of blinking and flashing, those are defective sets. They should not be they should not be blinking or flashing. Did you see any of the nights at all? Like it was kind of a little planned. It looked like it was kind of I, No, I just thought it solid. So that was great. That was out there solid, except there there were about <laughs> four of them that were partially lit that would sometimes flash on and off. And those are, are not those are defective sets. Something, something, something's wrong with the wiring here that needs to be changed. Well, it sounds like you're aware of it, and that'll just make everyone happy to know that you were responsive and it's part of the punch list. And yeah. I think Sandra is all happy about it, but it's a, it's great. I think it's cool. I wonder how many people are going to get married on that bridge. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. see little tulip chairs on the on other, other side? side? Yeah, when yeah. yeah. that, that, they're adorable. No, I want to go ride my bike in there. Yeah. That's close. That was the concern that intent people to take motorized scooters along that path. It is happening everywhere yeah. the scooters. Yeah. Well, the baseball field there, I'm guessing you're not going to go. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, it's good. Let's say if it's at the softball fields, I guarantee the baseball kids are taking them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes yeah. they're the way for your <laughs> under 16 child to get there, though. It you is. can't drive them. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we, we're, we're hoping to try and get a, a program <laughs> meeting for the bridge light schedule this week. I don't know. That seems to be narrowing the amount of workable dates. As we go as we go through it, but we're hoping in the next week or two to do that and, and, and think program how we're how we're looking for it. Right now, I mean, we're not looking for anything fancy for the general day to day lighting of it. We're just looking to light it. But there's certain holidays and maybe some special events, <laughs> Packer game days where we go green gold, you know, that type of thing, the night before the night outside of there, where we're going to use different colors. Um, but, but the normal bridge lighting. At least right now, the plan is just to kind of go normal and ease into any of the color combinations and just see how that works. Like you said, there's the um, or what your one of your one of the points that you brought up was um, the intensity of the lights. The LEDs are much brighter than, than than your normal other type of lights. Um, so we're hoping that during this programming meeting, we we don't know yet that we've got the ability to the rays are more than intensity level. So they're not warm lights. They're white lights. They're white lights. <laughs> or, 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 or green, bright green lights or bright red lights for the color. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, any other questions for Brian or anything else, Brian? You have on your end. The one question I have on the 
sidewalk. So what you're saying is what came, what McMahon and the county are recommending is between the two ramps, you have the ramp on the south side of that intersection, the ramp on the, ramp on the north side, the sidewalk is going to be 10 feet there. Correct. So it'll still have one trail coming out of Alden Station that will run into that sidewalk. And then if someone on a bike wants to go to that northern ramp, they get on the 10 foot sidewalk and head up the go, or they go across. Correct. Either way. Yep. So my question to you did was there any idea, any comments or consideration of taking that asphalt trail and winding it and putting one go? Going up and leaving the sidewalk five yeah, that, feet. That was one of the things that we had talked because I know yep. that was a recommendation that you had made. Obviously, the, the core of the trail isn't there right. currently. Um, and we, when we were discussing, we just thought that um, from a constructability standpoint, just adding that sidewalk could be, you know, much, much easier to just essentially scab on to what, what's there. Um, and then it's not going to hinder any sort of future development within that, that parcel by eating up, you know, pushing that easement. And then additional 30 to 40 feet, you know, to allow that split in the trail. Everything would be done more in the right of way. All right. I mean, the only concern I have about the 10 foot sidewalk is we're then encouraging, potentially encouraging bicyclists just to keep going on the sidewalk. You know, it's instead of going on the sidewalk. It's only going to be 10 feet between those ramps, isn't it? Correct. Right. And they but can then you get out of there. Pardon? Bikes can go on the sidewalk. I know, but it's. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they can also I know. I know. Okay. That's all good. All right. Anything else then? Works. Um, Rex, anything else on parkland? Uh, the goose are the geese. The goose. The the goose. Goose. Gooses. Geese. Mm -hmm. The geese are out full force right now as they typically are this time of year so I apologize if anyone's having issues with goose poop on the trail we, we most weeks we're actually out there we were brushing it off twice a week but literally we brush it off and within a couple hours it can go across it look like we haven't been there in a month so we're, we're just we're dealing with that so we're trying to take care of it we're thinking of different options for along the trail area um, you know, whether it be we have we have some different kites that actually work at the Schwabney Lake. We're wondering if we put them up high where the kids can't necessarily get them if that would work along the trail. Um, I know at the marina, uh, we've ordered the, these little silver streamers mm -hmm. um, that we're going to be tying to the post lights out at the mm -hmm. marina on the north and south marina piers um, to see if that helps. We, we've heard that, that helps on private docks. Um, so we're 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 trying different methods of Abatement. But, but, but we're going to buy Kim a German Shepherd that she'll have to take out on the box. We've tried everything. A border trough. Something like a convertible on our side. Streamers, streamers, streamers. We had the spinners. Literally every two feet, like the three foot ones that are like huge, worked for a year. Now they go right by it. What do you think about it? Uh -huh. there. Actually, we found a spray though, so I'll let you know if it works, but it, it did. We'll see how long it lasts for. Oh, spray's an option. You know, we, yeah. there, there's, different, there's different though. sound things that you yeah. don't sound, but my word with that is oh, CO2 so cannons that. No, it, it, right. it's a high pitch that the humans yeah, can't hear. Can hear it's it's like, dog. But that's why that's I haven't what we haven't tried right. Yeah. Just the dogs right here and we're not going to find yeah. so many people that have pets. Yeah. Or other animals. Yeah. Yeah. So, anything else but goose poop? That's it. For right. Right. So, and right. technically it's goose season, right? It is. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm. Sometimes there's not. Something that eats the poop. Like you can yeah. let them all loose. Yeah. Or eats the piece. It's <laughs> what it requires. Um, Wallow, well, anything from Wallow that Kelly did? Not the same thing. Nothing on my end either. All right, then 7B update on street sweeping on South Broadway near Brown County Resource Recovery Center. Yeah, just a quick update on that. I have to set up a meeting with 
we'll call contact you on the game. Dean was at our last month's meeting about that. I think Brian and I spoke internally and they, we can accommodate it from an equipment and staffing point of view seasonally. And what we mean by that is we, if push comes to shove and we can't get a commitment, we could pick up additional streets we can use once, uh, no more than twice per week for a period of time. And I think it was maybe up to 40 times a year, 50 times a year. Am I talking too high? You're just 20. Yeah. 20 times. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Just um, yeah. So, how we're looking at it is we'd like to, to talk with them. This is still the county's responsibility. We don't want to advocate the county from maintaining their responsibility. Um, but if this is a priority for the community, we can accommodate some additional sweepings that would help alleviate some of the concerns about glass. Again, we would only be able to do it during the warm months. Sometime in March at the very earliest, likely more April. So think about like grass mowing season, that's pretty much your street sweeping season. Um, anytime it snows or there's snow debris or anything like that, on the curb line, we're not going to be street sweeping that. Um, we plan to approach the county and working out some kind of like shared intergovernmental agreement, if you will, where we would be able to do the work for them, but then they would compensate for that. <coughs> so that's where we're at. Um, we'll stay tuned. We'll see what the county says. And, I appreciate that. I know the neighborhoods along there will appreciate that a great deal. You know, I was not comfortable with the suggestion to have people call with the complaints. I just played that out in my mind and anybody at a front desk taking, you know, I just, I think that falls on deaf ears at some point just becomes noise. So I, I really appreciate that. So if there's a way you could do the opposite, if you want a positive feedback from people, if that helps you in any way, let me know that. Sure. And I know Morgan Fuller, the one I mentioned that was at the meeting, she's a Rock County supervisor and she's on the resource and the recovery board or whatever it's called. Um, and she had talked to um, Paul Fontecchio about it as well. And what he had told her is they try to get out there every two to three weeks. And what her suggestion was, keep it closer to every two weeks as close as you can. Um, but I think you gentlemen, I would encourage you still to meet with policy because yeah. it ultimately is, you know, the county's responsibility, like Jill said. And that might be an approach where the county takes care of the one week and we go the opposite week. It's right. going to be based on our availability too. And, and looks like there was place in there that I want to. Uh, there was some utility work that was done That's out there. Was so the okay. that had to be I thought maybe you were the level in the um, I don't think so. It was Directly tied to the utility that was out there. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't bounce out. Yeah, probably will. Yeah, it's less bouncy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's less bouncy. Yeah. Yeah. But not for us. Yeah. It will only help, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, any other questions? So just keep us in the loop on that. If we can maybe revisit it this winter sometime, early spring, when it'll start to get more ice this out, that would be great to have some plan in place that. It will be taken care of better than it has been in the past. That would be fantastic. Okay, 8A we have done, B we have done. We are on to 8C. Consider, discuss, act, act, recommendation for winter maintenance activities on the village trails. Yeah, so this one was brought forward at the request of the committee just to look at what we did last year. I think we kind of reviewed the process. I thought by and large we felt that our winter maintenance activities last year were relatively successful. Uh, with a few hiccups here and there, as to be expected with the new operation. Um, it was requested to have a conversation about maybe adding some additional trails. Uh, we talked about it internally, and our recommendation from a staff point of view was maybe let's let's give it one more season at least, if not two, depending on how the season goes. And the reason for that is we had a really mild winter last January and February, so it was really hard for us to understand what real winter looks like. We had a lot of snow in March and April, but by that time the weather was warming up. We had a high sun angle, so the melting activity of the general uh, radiant um, sun activity was beneficial for us. So it was really hard to understand how challenging it may be in those peak winter time months. So our recommendation was let's, let's at least see if we can get an average winter, if you will, or at least a snowier or more precipitation in January and February, and then at that point, see how much of an impact that has on, on our operations. 
bus last year, we had, I think maybe a week where we had successive snow events, but after that, it seemed like it would come all at once, and then it would be done for a while, and then it would come all at once. So just kind of seeing how those repetitive snow events of two to three inches every couple, three days, and how that builds on itself and our operations, I think would be helpful for us to understand the, uh, the impacts for us. So that's that's our recommendation, but certainly the committee can make a recommendation to the board to, to change the map that was included in your packet. I think that's fair. I mean, that's what we talked about when we first did it, was trying and kind of seeing because we said it and then winters are all different. So we know it's going to take a little while to get an idea as long as we're still doing everything we did last year, which we got great feedback yeah. on everyone going ahead. Yeah, I guess that was my feeling too, is we didn't know how it was going to work right. and what was involved, but we had to take at least a year or maybe a couple of years yeah. just to figure it out. Right. And so, yeah. so I, you know, I'm on board with that too. Right? Yeah. Um, the only other thing I would like to add on your map that you have, you see the red circles and those are, if I understand it right, and Joel or um, Brian, correct me, are where push buttons are for crosswalks. Is that correct? What those red circles are showing. So on the Wabi Lane Trail and also the Sand Acres Trail, we do have some push buttons for pedestrian access um, along those trails, getting across Ridge and then also getting across Packer Land. And last year, those were not cleared. So we had the trail cleared, but no one could get near the buttons to be able to push them. And Sand Acres, I, I'm sorry, I did not get down Sand Acres to see exactly if that was cleared or not. And that's that new crossing across Sand Acres that goes to the new development on the west side. So I would agree that we should stay with the same trails. I think given another year, we didn't have much time, like Joel said. But I would like to see those head buttons cleared so people, can, when they're using the trail, can push those buttons so they can safely cross the road. Because right now, you know, we're opening it up for them to walk, which I think is great. Um, but they get to those corners and there is no push button they can get to to safely cross. Um, so that would be my recommendation that those are cleared. And I know talking to Joel last year, Brian, it's a pain in the butt. They're tough to get to, but it's just important that we're going to open those up for walking. We need to have those buttons accessible as well. We don't want someone not to have access to I think if somebody's out there walking and there's six inches of snow, they can still get to that push button. But it gets to the point where there's two feet of snow and it's ice chunks, then then that's when it becomes a real issue. Right. I mean, the one was buried on South Ridge. You could literally not get to it the whole winter. Because it was, they, that's where they must push all the snow, I'm not sure. but yeah. um, So that one you could not get to across South Ridge if you were going um, Eastbound, I guess. And that's some of the challenges with that. Like, so the speaking of the Wabi Trail, you know, you're, you're plowing that with a pickup truck that right. doesn't have the ability to articulate. Yeah. So, where you see the snow stuffed is generally that's where the truck can get it. Yeah. Um, the guys aren't, you know, they, they're not going around with shovels and snow blowers, also. They're, they're in these trucks that they're used for plowing streets and plowing sidewalks for the school district. So, um, not saying it's something that we can't do, we can't. Um, it's just, you know, where there's going to be a second step to that operation that's coming around with the truck with either a snowblower or stopping the truck on the trail or in the road or wherever it might be, getting out and shoveling, um, just taking the time to do that, um, which the, I, I can't say that it's going to be easy, but it's going to be something that, you know, we're, we can try to add to our list. The one thing I'd note, too, is when we, when we do look to add additional trails, um, there's other things in the village that aren't occurring then. I went through our, our, our list of action items with Lee real recent to the things that we didn't get done last winter, hoping to prepare and get ready for it this winter. And those things do get pushed aside. So um, do, do note that we're not saying that we're opposed to it, but if we want to add more you know, areas where we literally have trees that are growing in the end of culverts that were like, holy cow, it's going to start to create flooding. Those are the things that may somewhat be right, reprioritizing because we're trying to juggle all the tasks. So it's um, something that, you know, we just need to be cautious of. And I think just kind of 
you know, just staying as a status quo is where, where we should sit until we figure out, you know, slam dunk, we got this under control. So. Just give an example of lobbying. And I, I know you gentlemen had said that was hard to get yeah, there, I, there. I get that. But, you know, I think it's just important if we're going to open the trail up, we need to have those accessible for people to safely get through. And the yeah. challenge is that I know the push button that you're referencing is to cross on the south side of Wabi to go east yep. um, when there is there is no sidewalk on the south side of Wabi. Yeah, but you can also walk on the road going. So right, you can, or you can go north, you know, go north and then go east on the sidewalk that's on the north side. So it's not that there wasn't an option, you know, it's just you, you, you essentially, the push button that was there was to direct you to an area that, like you can see in that southeast quadrant, there, I mean, we don't even plow in that area. It's, it's just, you know, that there is no pedestrian accommodation. So you, you can, Put a push button, you know, there's a push button to go across, but once you, you go across, if you were to go straight north and then east, you're going to be in the same spot. So, Brian, do we maintain this section of the trail? Um, That's by the gap, that old, uh, yeah, the big change five. place? Yep. yep. Yeah, so what? So we come, we're, we're maintaining this trail, and then we're coming across, and then this, this is sidewalk here. This so, is sidewalk here. Correct. So there's sidewalk here. This is all maintained-ish if the property owner maintains it, which yeah. is another challenge that we have. We haven't done too bad last year. Yeah. So um, there's a push button that's right here yeah. um, that is essentially for this crosswalk, but no snow removal occurs in this quadrant. Well, and they should. Those that property owner, and I've talked to the cold guy about it, and they have cleared it at times when I bought it up. Right. So our, our main focus was to allow kind of this this pedestrian movement here um, as there's limited connectivity in that quadrant. So we come straight through, we essentially plug this area full of snow and come up this way and shove all that snow, you know, into, into this general area. Interestingly, as Brian mentioned, this is the pet signal button right here. It is. To yeah. cross here, I believe there's a pet pad button here. Yeah, right? there's one closer. There's Correct. One closer. So this is all snow storage. Snow storage. There's a utility box here. So to we'd have to figure out a different area to place the snow and use different equipment to get to that pet pad. So that, like I said, or like Brian was saying, we're trying to encourage that movement because you're going to have to cross over here anyway. <clears throat> um, versus crossing here and then here, you, you really need to cross here to get to that corner. Yeah, but if you're going southbound on Ridge. You would have to, you know what I mean? Then you don't have to go north to take the corner and come back south again. So you're doing. So if you're walking or if you're, yeah, let's say you're walking and you walk here and then you're going to go this way. Then you'd have to go like this, this, and come back again. But it's just, I guess it's a suggestion if you, you know, can try to clear it and see if you can do it. Because um, there's people out there walking and you right. really it, are. It, I mean, they're using it. And, you know, I go up that way and I will cross over and then head south on Ridge. And, you know, and, you know, I'm able bodied so I can get there, but anyone else, you know, I saw other people who may not get there. So I, I, I'm not familiar with that area. I don't know how many people walk, but I think that the segment, the population that's going to, be doing that that's going to need that button is probably insignificant compared to the population of the village so i guess i would rather see them let's do the big stuff first let's figure that out and you know then we can do the small things i, I would rather i would rather see them say well let's get the the, the, the snow and the ice off the trail and do a good job and spend their time doing a good job of that and then later we can figure these other things out. Uh, just more of the let's do the big stuff first, or the, maybe it's the little hanging fruit, and then, then we can get these these smaller things after we figure everything else out. But I think it's more important to do the big picture than try to 
say, how do we solve the problem on this corner, this intersection, because there's a half a dozen people a day and they need to pass. Anybody else? I have a question down there. Is that where the new building is? In the corner there? No. Nope, we're a block off. Off the block we're off. Yep, Bell and Building's say, here. As people start going to the there, they might yeah, the, the challenge is, is there, you know, there is no sidewalk in between. Right. The, there is on the north side. Yeah. So they'll probably be coming across at Allied here and then coming down this way and then dropping in if, if that. Okay, so we need a motion from the board in regard to drug clearing what we would envision for this one to see. I can make a motion for the staff to continue to follow the same trails as we did last winter to get more data. Second. Um, motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Me. Yeah, absolutely. Rex has some cool bridge pictures that he wants to show us. Yeah, it's going back to the trail. Bridge. The bridge. So upper left-hand corner is probably what it's going to be normally uh, on any given day. So it's pretty. it's not super bright or anything like that. It's a little more muted. But but there's a lot to come here, which you will be able to see. Because the light bars underneath on the railings go in all different colors. Yeah, that's really cool. cool. So whether it be holidays or causes or mm -hmm. special games or anything like that. So look at that. The wooden oh, yeah, the stop what? bars are up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for October. February. Mm -hmm. So you can make oh, them all look at that. Wow. The light show. Yeah, it is. Sit there. <laughs> so you can do some really special things with it um, once we learn how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Oh, even from Broadway, right? Mm -hmm. Is that sitting on Broadway? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It is. All right. I just wanted to. There, there are some cool shots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. It's just, just not a bridge. Yeah, What's exactly. That? It's just not a bridge. No, it's not just a bridge. It's much yeah. more than a bridge. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, Max. Yeah. All right. Um, 8D. Consider. Discuss act on pedestrian and bicycle project task list. As we talked about briefly at our last meeting, and staff um, put together a list with prioritizing their recommendations on prioritization that you have. Um, and Joel, the right here, and Rex, um, any input or anything you want to share further on that? Yeah, I included a list of projects that I think we all have provided us after last meeting as well as so here. See that list that you know, in addition to this or complementary to the list that we have. The updated list that was in your packet uh, from the staff was the project list that we had previously distributed, but now kind of sorted, prioritized, if you will, based on the CIP priority. And then coupled with that, the, the year that we would propose or would include some of these projects into our CIP. Now, bear in mind, I did not add. Um, maintenance projects to things like corner sidewalk that should be a project that is considered a CIP project based on the size and scope. About 60% of the panels that are on corner of the existing sidewalk likely need to be replaced. So that that's another project in addition to these. So that would that it should be considered a CIP project. It's a significant project from the form of cost, but it's not a new amenity. So I kind of left it at, at new amenities. Um, so, so where would that fall in the budget? If they, let's say, we decide to go ahead and lift the replacement of 
the sidewalk and corner of sections. Where would that be budgeted then? That, wouldn't that be just regular maintenance? Regular, regular maintenance. Okay. If you decide we need to resurface a street, we have to figure out how to pay for it. Well, instead of us resurfacing a street or rebuilding a street, we're going to rebuild the sidewalk. So okay. it just it's still considered a capital improvement project from a from a cost standpoint. It's still yeah. a capital asset that needs to be repaired or replaced. So it would still show up in our capital improvement plan and then ultimately work its way into the annual budget in which the year it's planned to be completed. So it's really no different than a new project, but it's just a project. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it would be just like any other, like a, a playground project. The playground exists. The, the playground itself needs to be replaced. It still shows up in the capital improvement plan as a park development project or some type of park project. Um, and so that, that's kind of how that, that works. Um, so just kind of go through really kind of the first five years that, that we had identified as staff beyond that. Uh, the obvious ones are Lombardi Access Road. We are planning on reconstructing that road uh, as early as next year. And that would include some type of pedestrian accommodation, namely sidewalks. Rookwood um, is not a full reconstruct, but there's a retrofit of sidewalk proposed on that road on the north side with maybe a future south side um, um, component. But at this point, it's just the north side that we are looking at. Um, so those two projects would be 2024 projects. And those have already been kind of started in the, 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 the realm of we're doing survey work and putting an engineering on those two projects. Um, in addition to that, we have begun, sort of, um, work on planning the extension of West Main Trail. So if you, sort of, we have a contract in place to engineer it, but we kind of pulled that engineer off to do the Alden Station Trail, so Kim would be happy with that. So once that project's done, then they'll be on West Main. Um, that's a relatively complicated project because there are some environmental and engineering challenges there with grades and easements and a whole bucket of items. Um, that could result in the necessity to acquire easements or right of way. So although that project will begin in 2023 from a design standpoint, it probably won't be really kind of completed until 2025. Because we'll have to do all the design work and then from there, deal with the fund of acquisition and all that good stuff. <clears throat> uh, so that's a ma major priority. Ashwabu May uh, Trail Extension, that's another project that kind of sort of started. Um, we have engineers in place to begin the planning of that extension. And we're in relatively active talks with Brown County and New Water about that extension. So that, that will have begun, but the idea is at some point by 2026 that will be completed. Um, could be done sooner than that. It just kind of depends on how quickly we can get through some of the logistics of that particular project. Uh, South Ridge Road, that was one that DPW had moved up, and I think that's related to some new constructive work that's happening on South Ridge. That's can down on the very section? south end of okay. town. So from where to where? About? Brian, you got that? Okay. Um, South Ridge. So let's see here. Are you talking about the project number 44? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's unique. Um, I thought that this had the project limits in it. Um, I'm fairly certain that that is from maybe Hanson Road to the south, um, all the way to the lobby. Is that a rural section? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. That's, so that's, that's a listed in here. Oh, no, that's a pedestrian. So that's the northern piece then, from Hanson to Wabi. So. Because it mentioned sand acres in there, so I was thinking maybe it was further south, but I was just speculating. I don't know for sure. Oh. Well, it says no, will be important no. as development takes I, place in sand acres. I definitely misspoke. So it's from the sand acres park up to Main Ave. Okay. That's where it is. Okay. So it's essentially by the new YMCA there to go from the park up to the trail system that was just completed last year on West Main Ave. So that would be, it says wide outside lanes. Is that what? Is yeah, that, that's, why I, that's why I got confused. No, it's it's sidewalk. It should, that should be a sidewalk. Okay, so it's 
Park, Park, Sand Acres Park to West Main. Correct. And then it would be a sidewalk. Correct. And it's just one side of the road? On um, really? the east side. East side? Okay, so the side. Mm-hmm. I think I wasn't even aware of that. Yeah, this is, I don't is this the one that's like right behind where they just put the YMCA that we talked about? It is. About? Yep. It's just to the west of the Y then. Correct. So you have like a line like behind that, that part, like because we looked at like the parking lot and stuff that was mm -hmm. behind there. Yep. Okay. And then the West Main Ave is essentially from Ridge 241. So essentially that would be the, I guess we'll say the connecting, yeah, from there up to the, the pier roundabout. And that would be on the south side of West Main. Correct. Going down to the pier, Correct. down the hill. Correct. Okay. So the South Ridge Road is a sidewalk, mm -hmm. and it's from the park, Sand Acres Park, to West Main. Correct. And it's on the east side of the road of the sidewalk. So in front of all the homes, we'd be putting in. Yep, sidewalk. that would be all homes there. All homes. Are we sure we're talking about this is the right project? Okay. I thought there was a sidewalk already there when we looked at it in front of it, and we were going to be connecting to what was there. I mean, look. I remember. I don't think there's sidewalks in the park. There's kind of a semi sidewalk there. there, there there's like a little mini trail yeah. through the park. Yeah, right? And I know we talked about extending the San Acres Trail to Arts. Yes, but that's going back through the residential or through the van property once yeah. they decide to sell and the new developer takes over. I mean, uh, yeah, so the sidewalk here makes sense to me. Definitely. There's essentially, yeah. so it'd be in front of four houses in the side yard of uh, three houses, so there's seven homes. Yeah. Um, then there's a business, Robert Peters Construction. Yeah, yeah and that's right next to yeah. the Y. Then. Yep. Correct. So that's yeah. right behind that. I mean, it makes sense. So that's why I was wondering why it was 125K for just the sidewalk. That I would I would say that so just the so the sidewalk in current today dollars um, just as an example to replace the sixty percent of the panels on North Cormier when I ran the, the cost estimate that that's about two hundred sixty four thousand in today's dollars so yeah. so um, Brad, could you could you kind of list like outline on the map there just to make sure, sure we're we're on the same page with what. Uh, so there's a tr sidewalk here. Okay. Essentially, it's to go sidewalk. Ridge, ridge Road, right? Right here. Okay. So right here is Ridge. Right here is Sand Acres. Right here is Sand Acres Park. It's from here to there, and the YMC is there. Yeah. And then. When and when did that? Because I don't think this committee's ever talked about that. Is that a new one that that staff? That's when that was on the sheet is Project 44. Yeah, so. we talked about it in one of the meetings because I remember um, who was the one that was before the Y was even open there. Who brought it up? Capital but, was there. The one here was a bike and a wide outside lane. That's what how it was 44. Right. So it's a very different project now. It's yeah. not bike related, it's pedestrian, and sidewalk, which I think is needed there. I mean, I think it would be great, but it's kind of a different project. Was really and I'll, I'll have to look Just to, get, to get to Maine. We had talked because this is the gravel trail, the gravel trail following the, the, the easement, and it stops right here. So then the thought was once the van property sells, continue the trail up to Arts. Okay, and then from Arts, that, that's just like a block long, and then that's how they would have access to the trail. And then down this is from, from this trail connection once this is put in. Which would eliminate the need to actually have to do something on Ridge, but no, no, I totally get what you're saying there too. And I'll have to look back in our notes. I thought that was the yeah, maybe how it how it came to us when we got the sheet from from the county is Project 44 states exactly as it's listed in yours. It's a little confusing. So it's South Ridge Road, wide outside lanes. Yeah. There's little descriptor there. It just becomes an important route as development takes place in the area. I'm guessing this is a pretty old project, maybe identified in the plan in 2018. Yeah. I um, think Leroy is the one that brought it up that it needed to be looked at when they talked about the, the why going there. Okay. But it, it could be one that maybe we pull out of our priority list. Yeah. It was just one that, that was thrown in there. So yeah. 
maybe it just needs to be looked into more. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. obviously yeah, would... have a plan, and mm -hmm. maybe it's not quite set yet exactly what needs to be done there between what Rex just said and you know right. everything else. So maybe we should just pull that one out right now and do some further research into it. I mean, I think it makes sense, but mm -hmm. I agree. Um, it sounds like that it's kind of confusing as to what they actually we had put in there versus what ended up in there. Uh, and then, uh, so we'll, we'll kind of put that one off to the side and on the table. Uh, the next one was, and it's too bad Leroy's not here, but we prioritized the. Uh, Can we move the, that up? Uh, Hanson Road <laughs> yeah. project. So, yes. Yeah, we're going to swap the two. Yeah, right. swap the two. Right. Oh, yeah. Last time. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately for Leroy, it's not next year, but it's in the latter part of the project list because of the delay of the cost of projects. And then the other thing to know in talking with Rex, the idea of Extending that, I think Leroy's primary concern was that one block on the south side. What we'd be looking to do is extend it up to Melvin Crest to the mm -hmm. west, I believe, right? Well, we had talked about that committee and extended it. Yeah. Yep, yep. It was going to go with the bike and drive, yep. but then it's just all there's actually a number of people that I see walking from Raven's Crest yep. back and forth to Quick Trip and wherever. So yep. why not go to that, yep. that we'll go last on. apartment yep. complex? I mean, I would like to see this move up. It's been talked about forever and ever and ever and ever. So, you know, if that could be moved up further, I think that would be a, a good project to move forward. Well, but everything ahead of it is stuff we've been talking about forever. No, I know, but I'm just, I think that yeah. it's, you know, earlier than 2027, maybe if the Ridge Road one isn't there, we can move it up to 2025. Because that one's been discussed for a long time, and it's, there's a need for it. All these people walking on that side of the road. Uh, so with that, I, I think we found some pretty, uh, pretty substantial projects, cost-wise. Certainly, certainly it's within the, the priority schedule that we have. It's not to take away from any of the other projects that we prioritize higher. It's just a matter of these are kind of low-hanging fruit, and once that uh, the village has already begun the process of, of kind of Completing, so trying to get those done. Um, there's obviously a capacity issue for cost and staff efforts. So we want to be cognizant of that as well. Uh, but with that, I guess a group of the projects that the committee saw on the list that felt should be moved up and prioritized over the next five years. I just have a couple that I had questions on and maybe moved. Um, Project the 2021-2, the pedestrian way on Vanderpuren, sidewalk from Oneida to Holmgren. That one's out beyond five years. I think that one's important because there are no sidewalks going east-west from sure. Oneida Street sure. until you get up past the 172. Sure. So you, yes, Pilgrim sure. Way. And, and it stops. Yeah, Hanson doesn't have any. So I think that one is an important connection. It allows people to get to the post office through the back way. Um, so I think I think that one's important to look at moving up a little bit. Um, and then the only other question I had, gentlemen, was for like number 37, <coughs> the bike lanes. That's basically just paint. And again, South Point Road is paint. Are those ones that can be looked at? As part of a maintenance budget again, I know I realize that they have to go to village board for approval, but it is just putting paint down on those two specific. I've had some people ask about South Point Road because there's bike lanes coming out of Green Bay. They stop at Cormier, and people are going down the Quick Trip. And they're like, why don't those bike lanes continue out that far? So that one I've been asked. So that's the question on those two, just that they are paint projects. Um, and the other one, I think that's 37 and the 2022-3, it's a second number one. Number 37, if you put extended bike on Home Runway, that would eliminate traffic on Oneida, hmm. because they run parallel. For the bike lanes, you mean? Uh-huh. Yeah, they if might if pull that way. Yep. On Home Run versus Oneida. Yep. And Hanson, the glory, is, is wide already. I'm putting bike lanes on that section because it's just a single lane there it's not a four lane road there it's the two lane so so 37 yep. um that project 
um, the village board will be somewhat aware of it. That's a project that we actually have in our five year CFP to actually reconstruct that portion of the home ground. Okay. So that's one of the reasons why um, it, it is where it is, just because it may indirectly get done once we look at Holmgren south of Hanson, what the future of that looks like. It's a very road, wide roadway. Does it need to be that wide? Um, at that point in time, I think. Because it we, is all industrial park. It is. Yeah. Yep. At that point in time, I think we can look at, you know, is, is the current road cross section correct for its use? Okay. So, so is, that, is that in the next five years? Or is that five, beyond five years? It's beyond five, okay. but it, it is. So, would it great having the the CAP of it 2033, does that sound correct? So it is within the next, I, if I said five, I meant say 10. It is within the next 10 years. So. I mean, that's why we had it beyond five years. Correct. But we, we can certainly entertain that they are low cost items. Right. But the only thing, the only argument I would say, and it's not my argument, but it is a policy decision for some of these roads. Right. Yeah, you have the bike lanes, yep. you have to look at the parking. Yep. So, uh, you got like, does anybody ever park out there though? <laughs> you know what I, I mean? Know. Yeah, yeah. Just, I, you, you know, know maybe, I don't know. Right. Yeah. 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 So it is, you're right. I mean, it is definitely policy. I mean, South Point, you could leave parking there because it's a wide enough road that you can put the bike lanes, just like they did in Green Bay. They have parking, bike lanes, travel lane. So you would have enough width <laughs> to do that, and that's what the choice was. And then I think the South Ridge, only other one that I thought was important, the South Ridge sidewalk from its project number one, it's on the second page under the South Point, um, sidewalk on the east side from Cormier Valley View. That's beyond five years. I think that one's important. That's up in the, in the whole entertainment area and to have a safe place for people to walk that are on the east side of Ridge, I think is important. So that's, that's one other one that I thought the challenging one with that one is I know public safety from um, pedestrian management after the Packer games. Um, having pedestrians on both sides of the road when we get to the intersection of Morris and Ridge, um, that's something that we want to make sure. Right now, all the pedestrian travel is all on the west side, mm -hmm. where um, it allows for traffic movements to allow the pedestrians to continue to flow, but allow vehicles to make left hand turns to go south. So after a Packer game on Ridge Road, all the traffic went southbound. So the vehicles that are going west on Morris, they can still continue to make that turn. And it can be free flowing, allowing the traffic to, to they stay actually in the the opposing lane of traffic, if it sounds goofy. So the cars that are leaving uh, both lanes on Ridge Road are going southbound. And the cars that are coming out of Morris, so coming from say Barberry, they're hooking and they're, they're staying in that near lane going in the opposing how they normally go we, where if we allow pedestrians on that side um essentially they're going to have to stop that turn movement after game so that that was their main concern where they're shuttling people across um up by valley view to the west side to allow them to move so that's something that we're going to want to talk more with public safety on pedestrian travel um through there and I know just looking through some of Doug's notes, um, I know there was some resident interaction about the project itself that um, didn't go very well. Um, not saying that the project can't happen, you know, it is public right away. Um, we do have control of it. It's just who is going to be, we'll say the bad guy, and if we are doing the project saying that this is happening. Yeah. So. And the only other one is industrial park trail. I know you two gentlemen, Rex and Brian, have gone out to walk it and check it all out. So where does that fall in all of this? Is that something that we were looking at that as a maintenance project so we okay. for here and it will be in the next five years so we can go and make them that project needs to correct. Yeah. And I think Rex, you were talking with Northeast to get some Greg, it's supposed to be getting a budgetary number. It's supposed to get it to me two weeks ago though. So you're not the only one. So but it's, it's, it's definitely high on the priority list. You're looking yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can finish up all of our mill too. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have other ones that you think or want to just mention or move up or down or 
any comments on that? We talked, and I think I brought it up, thought that redoing Cormier Road, we have plans here to possibly extend those sidewalks on Cormier Road, but it makes sense to do it all at the same time, or doesn't that really matter? Do the north and the south side? Well, because we have plans to possibly extend that those sidewalks. On the north side, you're saying not to Peckerland, or are you saying both? Well, we're, we're, gonna do, we're thinking about a south, south side sidewalk. But on here, they're talking about. Oh, I think there was two projects. Two, one yeah. to extend the sidewalk to Packerland, yeah. and then the other one. Two number fourteen, both sides from Shady to Packerland. We can. It's a matter of is there a political will to so I, deal I, with the neighbors? So <laughs> I, 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 I guess my my thinking is if we are potentially going to do that and we also realize there's a need to replace that 60 percent of the sidewalk would it be better to split into two projects or just do it all at once and or does well, it doesn't really the save any effort or, yeah. 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 Can't do it. if we were to do it all at once i don't think the village has the funding okay yeah i, I think i mean if, i'd have to i don't have the numbers in front of me but you're probably you're pushing probably almost a million if you were to do okay. replace what's existing and then also install new. Um, the reason for that is there's highly likely that there's gonna be some utilities that are gonna have to get relocated. Um, and then you're, you're starting with a blank slate. So it's not like there's already a gravel base there where you're okay. just removing panels okay. and putting new ones in. Um, the other thing too is just, I think Joel touched on it quite well. I mean, do we, do we have the, the backing from the board to essentially okay. I don't want to say ram the sidewalk down these people's throats, but it, that's what is going to happen. And I've, I've been parts of those projects and other municipalities. They can be successful. And unfortunately, a lot of people see the benefits long after we're gone. When the sidewalk's there, they're using them. Yeah. But to get to that point, it is painful. It is okay. a lot of phone calls. It's a lot of emails. If that's the direction we get, by all means, I'll do it. I've done it. I'm not saying we can't do it. We just got to be ready for it. Well, I guess I was wondering it would be, is it easier to do it all as one big project you're saying? Not necessarily. There's not going to be a, a it's somewhat of a different operation. So you're, okay. you're sawing out panels and you're essentially just plucking them out. Okay. Um, where, you know, if you're installing new, you're essentially taking an excavator, going through, digging out the pops, so let's say, or okay. placing gravel. I'm not going to say that there wouldn't be a savings. There would be a savings because there's one less mobilization, but it's not going to be, you know, like an exponential savings because it is kind of two work oper okay. operations. Yes. So I'm going to go around here, but it, as I listen to all of you, I would, and they are both like wrapping their heads around, right, all these lists right. and all these whatever, and now they've prioritized it in an organized manner. Yeah. In my experience with people, I would love to see us launch some of these that we won't have headwinds on. Yeah. And to the ability that anyone pays attention to anything. I don't even know what people read or listen to anymore, but that we just go out there with our bike and ped, with, you know, working with, and this is, and we go out with happy things so that if at some point there's something where we're going to have to build support or something, we've already branded ourselves as a better Eshwapnon. Yes. I'm wondering about what other people's thoughts are. Well, I guess we need a motion then. Um, staff, thanks for all the work you put into this. You had some mm -hmm. good recommendations. I, I drew up them all. Um, if someone would want to make a motion to go, you know, with staffs and maybe pulling the South Ridge Road right now just because of the indecision on it, um, and then have the first one, two, whatever, four or five down to, um, what would it go down to? Hanson Road, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have those be the priority ones? So Southbridge comes off, Hanson goes up. Yeah, maybe Hanson moves up to 2025. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to 2027, or if you want to just say, let's do that and see how that goes. Or if you gentlemen have another one you would like to stick in there that you can put in the board. We could always, you know, do South Point. I don't know where it, where it falls. I know 
what's a small dollar item. Right. Um, but there will need to be some engineering, you know, so you can lay out, you know, exactly how our turn lane is going to look, stuff like that. Um, even though you wouldn't think it'd be too expensive, you're, you're probably over 50000 by the time you put engineering and then you put the paint yeah. into it. Um, painting, of course, is, is very cheap when you're doing it over existing because yeah, yeah. you're not doing all the layout. The layout's yeah. done already. Yeah. So. so then we could move South Point up into that list, or is that just a maintenance type? No, we'd have to get engineered and stuff too. Okay. Yeah, yeah it, would, it would have to be in the list. Uh, our maintenance budget for pavement striping alone, I think, is maybe six to 8000 So that would mean we wouldn't do painting anywhere else. We would try we to make this one. happen. And, yeah. So are, are these things that you have in this first five years, are those kind of projects that have been on somebody's radar and are kind of in the works already? Some of them are, yep. yeah. Yep. And I think all of them are, and, and, you know, not to discount. So the Industrial Park Trail is one that we've been talking about, and there's plans kind of in place to, to set aside some dollars to get that done. The Cormier Road one, that's a relatively new idea of recognizing that those panels need to be replaced. So that, that'll be a pretty substantial cost too. So I think we have some very completable, doable projects that are on the village board's radar, that are on the public's radar, that we should see a great deal of success completing. <clears throat> That's not going to touch on maybe some of those controversial projects that are retrofit and may provide. Yeah. So I, I like that and it kind of goes back and I agree with you, say, you know, there's a certain amount of public goodwill we have to consider. And if we do things that, if the village is planning them, there hasn't been noticeable resistance to any of those things, or we have heard about them now. So, so these would be projects that I think the general population would see as favorable. If we can say, well, here's what the bike and pen did. Well, you like this, and you like this, and you like this. So maybe you'll like this. And I think that's kind of what you were saying. And that's a really good point. Okay. <clears throat> and how thoughtfully these people yeah. prepare and think yeah. through all that. Like, I want it all to reflect well on everybody. Yeah. And it bears repeating again, if I haven't already said this before, but this, this gets updated every year. So as priorities change, you may find that Southbridge is a high priority. You may find. Um, Maybe the DOT comes back and says, let's put an overpass over 172. Yeah, I see that. So, <laughs> they give us all this money to do it. Yeah, yeah. They give us all this money to do it. Yes, that. exactly. Maybe, you know, Bill's priority. Yeah. yeah. So, anyone want to make a motion in regard to this? I think somebody did already, right? We have a. I kind of said something. Or is that something? You made a motion about something. I needed one before this. I, yeah. I can make a motion. I, I think, I think so, didn't we have a Kyle? No, no, no. We don't have a motion. No. All right, I can say make a motion to the ones that are within the five year plan with moving Hanson Road up above the Selfridge Road. Is that how we said that? Is that adequate? Yeah, and then we want to add a South Point and the additional striping on South Point. And you want to have a second for that? Second. Moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, staff, for all your hard work on it and committee for, I know it's a big project to go through all the stuff, so I appreciate it. And Kim, I know you have to leave in about six minutes, so um, we will go on to 8E, which is. Where is. Vice Pedestrian Committee site plan review process. I just asked Joe to put this on here, and Kyle, I didn't have a chance to speak with you about it, but um, Kyle has done the rep, or been looking at plans for site plan review for Bicycle Pedestrian Committee yeah. for probably years. Yeah. Um, and I just, basically what it is, is any, not any, most new projects that come into the yeah. village um, have to go through site plan review, and then Kyle does review them for looking at bike and pet accommodations. Um, so I just wanted to see Kyle first of all, I had a chance to get hold of you because you just got back. Um, if you would like to continue in this role and continue to take that on and do it, if you have 
the time and the ability that you want to continue to do that. Well, I can do that. That's not good. Okay. okay. So Kyle will continue with that. And then I had asked Joel if I can also get a copy of the plans so that I can look at them as well. So I will look at me and confer with you, Kyle. And I may yeah, it seemed like the last couple of years they haven't been as extensive as they were for a while. Many times it's uh, this industrial <coughs> commercial <laughs> is going to put an extra building, an extra garage up or something. Yeah. You don't need a white pen pen to. Do that, but yeah. there are cases where there are sidewalks or additions or new businesses moving, and those are the ones we need to be concerned with. Yeah. So just, I just want to let you guys know and make sure that Kyle wanted to continue doing that. So we'll continue as we have been, and you know, he'll look at the plans and then um, get input to the committee, and then um, the committee does review them and makes a recommendation on it. May or may not take the recommendation of the that committee, but that's our chance to get it. Into those well, plans. Typically, I'll get these, and you know, Aaron will send them, send them out and say, "Get them to me by Tuesday," because the you know we meet that day. So it's not like you know, I have a lot of chance to bring it before because you know the the schedule is pretty tight there. Yeah. When I asked Joel also if we could have staff also looking at that because. Kyle doesn't know everything about bike and bed, no more than I know everything about bike and bed. But Brian does, Aaron does, and have them also be eyes on the plans because we changed a lot of our ordinances recently and added some more requirements for bicycle and pedestrian accommodations. And I think it's important for staff to also be viewing that. And Joel said he would work with staff or change some of their documents. Well, I think it helps if you have somebody who understands blueprints and you look at six pages of plans, but I don't even know what to look at. Yeah. And I would say they need bike parking, and he say, and Aaron will say, well, on page three it says that they need that they're going to put bike parking. In. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think one of the struggles that we have with site plan is it's an administrative review, so it's strict application of code yeah. will dictate whether or not a site plan can be approved or denied. Right. Yeah. And so oftentimes, even at this committee level, or even on a plan base, it's not necessarily strict application; it's recommendation. So the developer, whoever is doing the project, may agree with it, but it's not required. So maybe the owner just doesn't want to pay for it. Or whatever it is, we wouldn't necessarily be able to deny the site plan because it meets our code requirements, but we would at least be able to identify the recommendations from committee or maybe from planning documents that suggest certain things. Yeah. There, there are two sheets that come with the plan. One is requirements that might have to do with parking, you know, fire department, police, and then there's a second one is recommendation. And if you don't have enough parking, then I think it's the, potentially they could deny it and request. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have enough bike parking, you can't deny a request because they don't put up a bike rack. But we can recommend that they put up a bike rack. And we may find that there are certain recommendations that are coming more frequently from the committee, and then at that point, does it make sense to modify the order? to reflect the value of the community, right? And that's what, what we want to require. Then, then we can make yeah. it up. So I think from a staff perspective, what, what I'll be asking our community development staff to do is just review those planning documents, certainly stick to the strict application of code, but then you can also comment on maybe the best practices or recommendations from the committee as far as accessibility, flow, things like that. Can't deny the application per se. But if we meet with them and say, okay, you know, we notice that there's some, you know, inadequate pedestrian flow or access or, you know, whatever, we can provide that as a recommendation, and then it would be written in the staff report for that developer to take into consideration. Because there's been times where I think Chick Fil A was kind of odd the way you were getting in and out. There were we would put or I put requests for, you know, crosswalks or marking or something. And, I think their bike left, bike rack two location was goofy. From yeah. when you came in, you'd be driving across the drive through lanes. Or yeah, I think so. Parking behind the building. <clears throat> okay, so we'll just continue on with that. Joel and the staff will be more cognizant of it and you know try to um, keep that in mind as they're looking at it. And Kyle will review it as he has the past, and I'll try to take a peek at them as well. Um, and we'll just keep it as it's going. And Kyle will continue. That's great. 
was it on that one. Any items for next month's agenda? We want to see anything added. Okay, so then our next meeting is October 9th, 2023. I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion to Kim. I think that was Kim. Right? Yes, it does. Okay. Second by Jessica, all those in favor say aye. 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 Post motion carried. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you in October.